Is the camera on? Hello, my name is Dion Brown. I'm going to be conducting a full head to toe assessment. This is my patient, Dewanda. Thank you for helping us out today. Really appreciate that. I'll be starting with my skin assessment. Based on inspection, I'm going to be looking at her ump extremities. Her skin is of African American descent. It is consistent, even tones throughout. There is some basically no presence of any type of lesions, no openings, no areas of concern. I do see one papier right below the right border um, of her bottom lip. Her skin is consistent. There is a scar on the anterior portion of her forehead below her hairline. The skin is smooth and based on her lower extremities, I'm going to get you to open up here, they are consistent as well. No discolorations, no areas where there are any type of openings or any skin disruptions. I am going to go ahead and feel your skin now, okay? So excuse me if my hands are a little bit cold. I'm going to just remove, untie back here. Using my dorsal surface, her skin is warm to touch. And her skin does have some even distributions throughout. And that is consistent as well. Her turgor is nice and brisk. It does return back. And in less than two seconds, she has no skin dryness. Moisture is adequate. Basically, right now, I am not... Um, examining any type of variscosities, no lesions are present. Right now I am going to look at her nail beds and they are nice and pink. No ridging. Her capillary refill returns less than three seconds. Nail beds, beds are firm to touch. No breakage. All are consistent bilaterally. They are clean and well groomed. Right now what I'm going to do is check for clubbing, okay? So I want you to kind of place your hands in this type of position here. And I'm going to get you to put them together. And basically, I do see the normal diamond shape. There is presence between bilaterally and appears no presence of clubbing and it does look like it's like at the normal 160 degree angle as we would expect for any type of non-clubbing fingers. They nail beds adhere properly to the bed of her hands. I am going to go ahead and on and look at your hair, okay? I'm just going to go ahead on and kind of undo it here, I'm sorry. You have to look at the presence of your scalp. She does have some processing in her hair and it is colored posteriorly around the occipital lobe. It is clean, um, no presence of dandruff. Scalp is consistent, colored throughout. There are no presence of lice present um, in the hair. Her ends are well grown. There is no consistent breakage, and it does appear to be moist and well kept. I am going to, right now, just feel around for any type of bulges, masses. I do not feel any, any tenderness right here. Basically, I am assessing for any type of disturbances and there is none. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and lay back. I am going to right now just look around and her face does appear symmetrical. Eyes are within normal proportion. I'm gonna be feeling around 
the temporal lobes here, any tenderness. All right, coming around to the TMJ, I want you to open and close. Uh, no presence of clicking, the TMJ does open and close um, as it should without any presence of pops or clicks. Head size and shape is symmetric and the nose is midline. The ears are right at the level of the outer canthus of the eye, right at the border of the eyelid. And open and close your eyes. Palpebral fissures basically open and close without any type of distinct opening once the eyes are closed. I'm gonna get you to lay your head back. Hair is consistent with the rest of her body. Lashes, upper, lower are intact. The eyes open and I'm gonna get you to look. And at this point I'm noting that the iris of the eye is clear, sclera as well. Her eye color is of brown and pupils are as well visible. Conjunctiva is pink. I'm gonna go ahead and pull your eyelash down. Pink and moist. There are no lacerations, no type of drainage coming from the occiput and her eyes are symmetrical bilaterally. The nose is midline and it is well proportioned with the rest of her face. I'm gonna get you just to kind of give me a smile, frown. I am testing the cranial nerve number seven right now and I am basically wanting to see if her facial muscles are with intact. I'm just gonna get you to give me the puff out your cheeks, bring them in, open your mouth wide, do any type of movement, abnormality, side to side, up, down. No presence of any type of disturbances when she does open and close her um, eyes or move her face. Um, cranial nerve, which is the trigeminal nerve, uh, we're gonna basically test for facial sensation, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little cotton ball here, okay? I'm gonna get you to close your eyes for me, all right? I'm gonna let you just tell me which side of, or where you feel it, okay? Right cheek. Right cheek is correct. Right cheek. Okay. Down the center of my face. The trigeminal nerve does seem to be intact. Um, she doesn't have any um, deficiencies with the cotton swab. I'm going to just continue to move down and I'm going to look around a bit. I'm going to do several things while I'm up here at the top and I'm going to be performing just some vision, you know, tests and I'm going to kind of light, okay, yeah, I'm going to be assessing some things with my thalmoscope and then we're going to move on to the ears while we're up here as well, okay? I am going to be testing basically I'm looking for the red reflex okay so I am going to basically look okay and I'm going to bring the light in from a distance and you can look straight ahead okay all right I'm going to guys Okay, I have my presence, the red reflex is present, and this will be done bilaterally. Um, red reflex is basically the light that shines on the pupil with looking through the ophthalmoscope. At this time, I'm going to just discuss the Snellen and Rosenbaum test. These will be tests done for distant and near vision. The Snellen test, she will be sitting 20 feet away from a chart, and we will cover her eye and she would basically read at a distance 20 feet away and the normal um, range for a Snelling is 20 to 20 vision. Rosenbaum would be testing for near vision. She would stand anywhere from 12 to 14 feet away from the chart and her normal readings would be uh, 14, 14 for the Rosenbaum and that would be testing her near vision. 
right now I'm going to be testing basically a peripheral confrontation test and while I do that I'm going to give you a piece of gauze and I'm going to get you to cover your eye okay any eye and I'm going to cover my opposite eye okay so she's covering her right I'll be covering my left and I'm just gonna ask you okay I want you to let me know when you see I'm gonna be kind of making some movements now. you do okay Okay. No. No. Okay. Confrontation is just assessing peripheral vision. She does assess well. That will be done bilaterally as well. I'm going to be test testing. I'm sorry, cranial nerve number three, ocular motor, and I'm going to be basically testing her six cardinal fields of gaze. All right. So I want you to take a look at this pen light, okay? While standing really about a moderate distance away, I want you to focus on the pen light. Noting that her pupils do constrict and dilate as the pen light moves, basically it does, um, we do not see any deficits at this point, but I'm gonna get you to trace the eye movements. Okay, I'm gonna start at position one, okay? Her eyes are tracking the pen light well. They're returning to the center as directed. There is no difference, deficiencies noted with her ocular motor. Um, basically, I'm going to kind of test now cranial nerves number four, um, six, four, six, and trochlear abducens, and I'm going to kind of do her uncover and cover test, and I'm going to also do some sensation to the cornea, okay? So right now, I want you to close your eyes, okay? I want you to place this, your gauze right back over one of your eyes. Now, open your eyes. I want you to look to your far left. All right? Uncover your eye without changing your gaze. Open for me. Let's do that again. So go ahead on and cover your eye. Look over to your far left. Far left. And keep your eyes fixed at your far left. Just bring your hand down. Both eyes are tracking to the left. Um, that is no disturbance in her um, ocular motor at this point. Um, trochlear and abducens are intact, and we're going to test this right now. Once you just open wide, okay? Don't be afraid. It is normal if you blink, okay? So we are testing right now. That does, um, cotton whips test does make her have a normal reaction and the eyes do open and close and that is normal. I'm going to look now with the pen light and I'm going to be checking basically her accommodation to light at this point. I am going to come from my side and look straight ahead for me. Very well. Coming over to the other side. Very well. Both eyes constrict, so that is parallel. The pupils are reactive, reactive, and they reactive equally and respond to accommodation and light. I am going to kind to just look at, um, continue to check around. I'm going to go and look with my ophthalmoscope, okay? So right now I'm going to get this, and I'm going to be looking into your light, not your eyes, okay? I'm going to come up close, and I'm going to look in your right eye with my right eye, okay? So, I'm gonna come from this side here. Sorry. So basically, I'm checking and I am looking for the retina. And the retina will be nasally, and I do see, yes, I do see it. Her retina basically is intact nasally. It is 
a small disc shape and the appearance of the color is like a yellowy milky color and I am going to trace the blood vessels laterally and I'm going to attempt to find a map like you see the presence of her venules and her arterioles there is no presence of crossing or nicking and at the lateral aspect I see the macula which is basically the center of vision it is in a darker spot and in the center there is a small little hole which is like the macula densa and that is where her sharp vision originates from. There are no disturbances in the visual field. Everything appears to be within range. Uh, there is no presence of drainage, no areas um, where I see any type of blood vessel disturbances as well. I am also going to not know any hemorrhages. They're clear without any spots and that will be done bilaterally. I am going to go ahead now and kind of move to your ears, okay, since we're up here. And I'm just gonna change my tip. While I'm going to be looking at her ears, I'm going to kind of look at it first and inspect um, her oracle and pina appear to be well distributed. The pina separates normally from right here at her mandibular area where the TMJ uh, meets. There is no presence of drainage on an external canal. There is no excessive cerumen present on the outside. I am going to now, with your permission, I'm going to get you to sit sideways. Well, just sit straight ahead, okay? And this time I'm going to just get you to look straight ahead. I'm going to pull back the tip of your ear and I'm just going to look around first by inspection. There is no skin breakdown, no disturbances present where the ears meet the skin. I am also going to be taking a look now inside with the otoscope. I'm going to kind of look around and try to find a tympanic membrane. Also, I'm going to be looking for several landmarks, which would be the external canal, the umbo, the malleus, pars tensa, as well as the pars flaccida, okay? So I'm going to be looking around. And sorry. All right, as I advance the otoscope into the ear canal, let me know if I'm pushing too hard, okay? I did note some very scant cerumen in the external auditory canal. I am shining my light and deep within the canal I do notice a pearly gray structure and I would note that as the tympanic membrane it is shiny in appearance and it doesn't seem to be any disturbances or disruptions where that meets. Alright, and I do note the malleus, the pars tensa, and the pars flaccida. Their notations are well with intact and there are no problems, no disturbances. I'm going to test her sensory portion of the ears right now and I'm just going to kind of Whisper something in your ear and I want you to let me know what you hear. Um, and this is basically called the whisper test, okay? Alright, so. Can you repeat what I just said please to the camera? Thank you for helping me. That is correct. Um, she did pass that. Right now, I'm going to use my tuning fork, okay? And this would be done bilaterally. We would test both ears for any type of the deficiencies and we would notate that as well. Um, this is a tuning fork, okay? What I'm gonna be doing now is I'm going to kinda test her air conduction and bone conduction. I am going to use my tuning fork, apply some pressure, and I want her to let me know 
if you first hear the sound as well as feel the vibration, okay? And this is kind of called what we call the Weber test, okay? Let me apply some pressure to this. Sorry, sorry. I think we all can hear it, but I want you to let me know. Are you able to hear that? Yes. As well as do you feel the vibration? Yes. Okay, that is an intact. I'm going to come here below the mastoid. I'm going to place this here and we are going to do the rind test. And can you let me know if you still feel the vibration? You may not hear it, but feeling it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so her Ryan and Weber tests were conducted. It basically um, lets me know that bone conduction is greater than air conduction at a two to one ratio. So your hearing and your sensation are well with intact, okay? I am going to take my uh, scope again, okay? Now we're gonna look inside the nose, all right? All right, hold your head backwards for me. I am going to kind of look the symmetry is she is symmetric and the nares are appropriated bilaterally i'm going to look inside and the turbinate is clear nasal passages are clear and from any type of visible occlusions there is nasal hairs present do not see any type of drainage do not visualize any type of drip and this is would be done bilaterally as well I want you to kind of hold one nostril okay go ahead depress one of your nostrils I want you to sniff inward and I want you to do the other one any disturbances when you do that any type of issues or concerns it did um, appear that all was with in normal limits and there was no obstruction with air passages moving either way I am going to do my smell test okay and I want you to let me know the different scents that you possibly smell or don't smell okay mm -hmm. all right this is my first all right you can just hold it vinegar vinegar is correct that is the correct scent I want you to include the other side and I want you to let me know what this one does. Alcohol. Very well, that is correct. Those um, test her olfactory nerve, which is smell, and those are intact. I'm going to go ahead and move down to the mouth, okay? I want to get you to open up, all right? I have to put my gloves on because we have to count teeth, we have to look inside, and I just don't want to be feeling inside, okay, without protecting your mouth. So, all right. So, first, I want you to open up ah uh, as loud uh, as you could. I want you to move your tongue around, up, down, side to side. Any issues? Don't look like any type of deficiencies and movements. I'm going to go ahead and open up again with my, actually I'm going to use my pen like this time. Okay, I'm going to look and I'm going to depress. Okay, if I get too far back, she wants to go a little bit. Okay, her uvula is midline. When I get close to her uvula, it does stimulate her gag reflex and her hypoglossal nerve does appear to be intact. I do not see any type of areas where I see any lesions, Buco, buccal mucosa is pink and moist. I am going to feel around now, actually I need to still use my pen, like I'm going to count your teeth, okay? Mm -hmm. Look at her all the way back for me. Alright. Wisdom teeth have been taken out? No, I'm sorry? It never came through. Never came through. Okay, so that does explain why I don't see and I mean I don't see any disturbances in the back. So one, you're lucky. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen at the top. Come downwards. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. 
29. Basically, 29 healthy adult teeth. I do not see any presence of caries. Um, don't see where there is any poor or improper dentation at this point. I am going to now feel inside your mouth, okay? I may um, make some increased saliva production, which will be normal. That will be my inspection of her Stinson and Wharton ducts. I'm going to kind of look around. I'm going to get you to lift up your tongue. Okay. Do you see her presence of her Stinson and Wharton ducts under her tongue and on her behind right here up in the cheek buccal area? I see her frenulum is intact. I want you to say ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, and then that's at the UV. I'm going to test right now for her hard palate, which is intact, and come below and test for her soft palate, which is intact as well. I'm any issues, okay? All right, give you a second to get together here, okay? I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm going to be going around and I'm going to just test for some glands okay around your face just gonna kind of go around and touch no tenderness when i'm testing for a preauricular paranasal sinuses no tenderness noted here occipitate no tenderness no disturbances everything seems to be without any bulges lesions the um eye fits well within the socket um doesn't see any type of disturbances and now we're just going to like sublingual area looks very well tongue and all of that stuff moves um appropriately and that does you know note that her hypoglossal nerve is intact tongue movement is adequate also um the vagus nerve does is responsible for swallowing and um we won't stimulate that nerve being that you know it does um lead to cardiovascular system throughout the whole body pretty much as well but it's responsible for swallowing and speaking and we're gonna go head on and down and kind of look down at your neck test some you know um, symmetry movements and all that stuff I'm going to check in clavicles do appear to be symmetric I'm going to test your strength I'm going to come up against my resistance okay I'm bringing it down normally that is done bilaterally. I'm gonna kinda of look and palpate for cervical chain, the lymph nodes as well. Any tenderness here going below the occipitate, right around. Come in preauricular cervical nodes. Any concerns or issues at this point? Okay, all right. All right, while I am here, okay, what I would do is I would palpate her thyroid because I'm in the area of the neck. I'm checking for sternocleidomastoid muscles, making sure everything um, is intact as well as checking for deep cervical um, lymph nodes, occipital lobes, all those things in her carotid arteries will also be palpated while I'm here. I'm going to get you to turn over to your left, okay? All right. It is not uncommon to see the carotid artery, but I do know a pul pul pulsation here, and that is consistent with the carotid artery being in the right location. That would be done bilaterally. I'm gonna get you to lift up your chin, and I do not know any type of heaves, lifts, or thrills, any type of bulges, no abnormalities, okay? Um, once we start listening, I'll go ahead on and listen with my stethoscope for any type of thrills or bruise as well as palpate. I'm going to get you to try to palpate your thyroid, okay? So I'm coming behind here right in between the juggler and the carotid. So I'm going to get you to swallow, okay? Awesome. As her swallowing progresses, what we would notice as there will be an upwards and a downward movement. The trachea will go downward and the thyroid will actually be going upward. And I did not feel any type of nodules, masses, or any disturbances there when we did that. So that is normal and the thyroid gland does seem to be without any type of enlargement or any type of visible border, okay? And that's normal. So 
I'm going to take my stethoscope while I'm up in this area. I'm going to listen for any type of whistles or blows right here. What I do here is a pulsation that was going to be done bilaterally. And that would be consistent with her carotid. Sorry if I was depressing too hard. I was just trying to make sure I did not hear any type of blows or whistles and anything coming from your carotid or your thyroid because that would indicate an abnormality, okay? All right, moving along, we're going to come down to your thoracic area, okay? You comfortable with bringing your gown down a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, chest appears to be symmetric. Um, pectoralis muscles, there are no inconsistencies. I'm going to come, basically look, no type of visual disturbance. His skin is consistent with the rest of her body. Presence of stray is normal. Um, that's not uncommon um, around the breast area and right around the axilla area, okay? Um, right now, I'm going to look. Now I'm going to listen, okay? Just, just taking a deep breath for me, okay? Okay. Respiratory pattern is normal. It is symmetric. I don't see any types of asymmetry when she inhales and exhales. And now I'm going to tack, do your tactile affirmatives while you're standing, sitting forward, okay? Yeah, you can turn towards the side, okay? So, I'm actually going to be feeling around, okay, while you repeat the words 99, okay? 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, okay, symmetry is normal. I'm going to get you taking a deep breath. There you go. I'm going to come down. We're taking a deep breath. Very well. Right now, um, there are no appearances. Um, shape, color, movement, all seem to be within tech. I'm going to undo your bra strap here, but you can hold it on in the front because I'm going to be listening and all over your lung fields right now, okay? So I'm going to be, actually let me start here. Okay, I'm going to start here. Uh, taking a deep breath. I'm listening at the apex of the lungs right now, and that would be right below her clavicular bone, right where her shoulder bones meet in posteriorly. Her spine does seem to be symmetric no appearance of kyphosis or lordosis. Take a deep breath. Good. Deep breath. Be doing this from side to side bilaterally and get you take a deep breath. I'm coming down to the basis of the lung. Deep breath. Deep breath. Very good. Deep breath. Deep breath. Awesome. Okay, right now I'm going to be percussing your lung fields. Okay, I'm going to take the pleximeter, my hand, and I'm going to basically listen for any type of sound changes. Dullness lets me know that I'm over an organ. Timpani and resonance let me know if I'm over a field of air. I'll be doing this bilaterally. If I was going to test her diaphragmatic excursion, I would basically palpate, sorry, from her lung fields. 
sorry. I I'm going to be palpating basically from um, the 10th intercostal space and then coming up basically posterior from her bones at um, the iliac crest and I will be coming upward and that where I feel here the sounds of dullness will be where her diaphragmatic excursion would be and um, if for the sake of time in the video we won't do that today okay get you to come around back with your feet up I'm going to be listening for um, looking at your anterior chest I'm gonna lay your head back a little bit because I'm going to be listening for your cardiac sounds okay mm -hmm. so you want me, for the sake of privacy just coming here okay I'm gonna be listening with the bathroom and my stethoscope and right now I'm gonna be listening for at my finding below the clavicle, come down to the second intercostal space, and I should hear on the right side. Awesome, I hear adequate heartbeat at the aortic area, and that is at my right second intercostal space. I move over to the left second intercostal space, I do hear normal S1 and S2, and I will go on down. That would be noted as a pulmonic area. Come on down to my third left intercostal space. That is normal S1 and S2 at my herbs point. Come on down, sorry. Right here between my fourth and my fifth intercostal space at the sternal side, that would be my tricuspid sound, normal S1 and S2. And then I would come down below here at my fifth intercostal space at the midclavicular line and I will note my mitral area. And that is, sorry. Uh, I do hear normal S1 and S2 there. And this will be also noted as normal S1 and S2. And that would be also my point of maximal impact and known as the apex of the heart. And I will be listening there for a full second, full 60 seconds to obtain an accurate apical pulse okay so right now what we're going to do is kind of go around we're going to be palpating your temporal arteries moving down all the way from head to toe okay this will be done bilaterally temporal to carotid again I'll palpate on the left fifth intercostal space for the apical Then I will come here at the antecubital area on the right arm and I will check for my brachial. Come down to the wrist area and I will check for my radial pulse. They are consistent. I will go here and undo your ankles for me. Right here at the groin area, I'll be checking for a femoral pulse. And I will come here below the knee. Be checking for my popliteal. Good. We'll come here on the inner side of the ankle and check for my posterior tibial. And at the top of the foot, I will be checking for my dorsalis pedis. Okay. All right. What we're going to do now is we're going to, at the halfway mark of the video, we're going to actually sit you up. We're going to scan the room with the camera. Camera person, we're going to scan this. Get you in a normal position, okay? And then we're going to move on for the rest of the video, okay? 
All right, camera person. I'm gonna pick up this again and fed up. Sorry, this thing keeps. Okay. Are you comfortable? Yes. You need anything? You warm enough? Any concerns at this point? Nope. Right now, what we're gonna be doing is checking the abdominal area. Thank you for scanning the room for me. Um, what we're going to do right here is, I'm sorry, are you okay with mm -hmm. us being all right? We're going to come in and go ahead on down and try to get you a little bit comfortable. I'm going to lift the sheet up so you can be covered here below, okay? Mm -hmm. And take this off, okay? All right. Abdominal area. Skin looks normal. There's a presence of what looks like to be some kind of uh what would we call that let me try to measure that area there i have a marking pen somewhere okay i can use actually right here on my pen light looks like a two to three centimeter raised area where maybe like a pressure or a bump or something was there it is not draining um maybe where the pants line meet there was um was it open and draining no, no okay all right just a bump in healing stage it is not open um that would be notated as a papule and a scab i would say in a healing stage uh abdominal area is symmetric and have you had children mm -hmm. okay how many children have you had three pregnancies three pregnancies Four children. Four children. So I'm assuming, well, not assuming, but I'm going to guess that you had a set of twins. Mm -hmm. Okay, so notation of stride present around the umbilicus is not abnormal. Um, skin discoloration is neither here nor there. There is some um, consistency bilateral. Um, what we do is we kind of look, listen, and then feel. Okay, so I will kind of just look and then I'm going to be listening. The umbilicus is depressed. I don't see any type of drainage. Um, it appears to be normal um, within normal limits and I'm going to use my stethoscope here, okay? Okay, I'm going to start in the right upper quad, okay? Um, listen for bowel sounds, all right? Bowel sounds are audible in the right upper quad, left upper, good, left lower quad, awesome, coming over here, alrighty, bowel sounds are present, active throughout, going to kind of go ahead and feel around a little bit, okay, let me know if there's any tenderness. I do not feel any masses, lumps, bumps. You okay? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> no bulges, masses notated. While I was listening at her abdomen, 